There's a format on Pokemon Showdown called Almost Any Ability where you can use Pokemon with any ability that you want. However, there are restrictions on what abilities and Pokemon you can use. Some abilities and Pokemon are overpowered. That's why it's called Almost Any Ability. For example, it shouldn't surprise you that abilities like Huge Power or Wonder Guard are banned, and it shouldn't surprise you that Pokemon like Regigigas are banned. But there are a few bans you probably wouldn't have expected, like Noivern or Dragonite. We're going to talk about every weird or unexpected ban in the AAA tier on Pokemon Showdown. And make sure to subscribe to the channel. Most of you are not subscribed and it really helps me out if you do. It's free and helps the channel grow so I can keep making more videos. I've talked about Archeops in a previous video so you can check that out, but briefly it's because of Magic Guard Life Orb Head Smash being almost unstoppable. Similarly, Blacephalon was banned because of Magic Guard Life Orb Mind Blown. Blacephalon's huge special attack stat now gets a huge special attack with no drawback. Even water types can barely switch into that much power. And on top of all of that, Magic Guard makes Blacephalon immune to Stealth Rock too. Shadow Ball hits every fire resist or flash fire Pokemon. For example, Shadow Ball 2 hit KOs Tapu Fini after Stealth Rock. But what makes it overpowered is its access to knockoff. For one, Regenerator Assault Vest is the primary special defense counterplay and Blacephalon can just knock off the Assault Vest to open itself up later in the game. Blacephalon can even explosion on special walls to open up the game for its teammates. It can even use other options like Focus Sash, Choice Scarf, or Calm Mind. It forced teams to run niche options like Flash Fire Blissey and ultimately was banned for a simple reason. It was too powerful. Up next is Buzzwall, who was banned for being too versatile. Choice Banded Tinted Lens means it could break through most things in the tier with close combat. But it also had Triage with Drain Punch and Leech Life if you wanted to go fast. It was one of the best offensive Pokemon, but also it was one of the best defensive Pokemon too. Its typing and defense stat lets it beat top Pokemon like Weavile, Extra Drill, and Mamoswine. It could even use Magic Bounce as a defensive hazard stopper. What made Buzzwell broken is not only the sheer power, but also the versatility. You never knew what it was using until it was too late, and it was the best offensive and defensive Pokemon at the same time. Dragapult is next and everyone knows how good Dragapult is in standard play because of its speed, but in AAA you could give it an ability to make it powerful too and that was all the difference. Dragapult's mixed sheer force sets make it over the top compared to OU. It typically ran a combination of moves like Shadow Ball and Dragon Rush, Steel Wing for Fairy types, Thunderbolt for Toxapex, Fire Blast for Ferrothorn and Corviknight, or simply U-Turn to pivot out. It could also run stuff like Adaptability with Dragon Darts plus Draco Meteor, Specs Adaptability, Banded Technician Dragon Darts, and the list goes on and on. With abilities that could increase power, Dragapult became a deadly wall breaker that had no counters. In standard play, Dragonite's Dragon Attacks are nerfed by Fairy types, and its best flying move is Dual Wing Beat, which isn't very good. But in AAA, Dragonite finally got good flying type moves because of its access to the Aerial 8 ability, and it immediately proved to be too strong. With base 134 attack and a stab boosted extreme speed plus double edge, it becomes impossible to switch into. Whether it was choice banded or heavy duty boots, extreme speed cleaned up offense and double edge was a menace to defensive teams. Common physical walls like Tapu Fini, Hippowdon, and Mew are two hit KO'd by even heavy duty boots double edge. It can also run coverage like Earthquake and Fire Punch to hit steel types like Magirna and Corviknight, or it can even Dragon Dance on them in the case of Corviknight. In short, actual good flying type moves made Dragonite way too strong for the metagame to handle and it was banned. Gengar is an interesting one because it's the first one who's not really common in standard play. But with access to No Guard, Gengar can run moves like Zap Cannon and Hypnosis without the chance to miss. This is extremely overpowered because it can just pick a status to 100% inflict on a foe and then double the power of Hex. It can set up nasty plots on anything asleep too. Another extremely deadly set is Sheer Force Life Orb, taking advantage of the fact that all of Gengar's moves are Sheer Force powered, such as Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, Energy Ball, Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, and more. Gengar can even run Tri-Edge, and the idea is to set up for free while the opponent switches into a special wall like Blissey, and you can set up on your own. At plus 4, Giga Drain can even one-hit KO Choice Scarf Garchomp, which was supposed to check other Gengar movesets. Some even run Water Absorb or Storm Drain to set up on Barrascuta and Tapu Fini. Each of these sets are very good on their own, but when you have to guess which of the four it is, it becomes too much for the metagame to handle. Keldia was overpowered for one reason. Choice Specs Tinted Lens. 
Tinted Lens lets a 2-hit KO would-be resist like Toxapex and Secret Sword 2-hit KO special walls like Blissey, Mantine, and Sylveon because it hits on their weaker side. You can even run Keldeo on rain teams to get the 1-hit KO on Toxapex. Because both of Keldeo's stabs are so strong, you are forced to run a Pokemon that is either immune to both water and fighting, or 4 times resists one of them and is immune to the other. Even then, the list is basically limited to Desolate Land Chandelure and Water Absorb Togekiss, which is as bad as it sounds. In short, this is another example of something that is way too strong for the metagame to handle. Melmetal was overpowered because of its Double Iron Bash being paired with a strong ability. It's hard to switch into Melmetal's Double Iron Bash because neutral walls have to watch out for Steelworker, while would-be resists like Toxapex and Corviknight would get destroyed by Tinted Lens. Slower Pokemon cannot check Melmetal at all because Double Iron Bash has a 51% chance to flinch. Melmetal can still run coverage like Thunder Punch and Super Power, and it can even run defensive abilities like Flash Fire to lure fire types and kill them with Earthquake. Melmetal is an already great Pokemon, and once its Double Iron Bash got supercharged, it became overpowered. Noivern is probably the most unexpected Pokemon on the list because it's almost never used in standard play. But in AAA, Noivern has access to Aerialate plus Boom Burst, which can 2-hit KO even Corviknight and Oko any wall breaker slower than it, like Terrakion and Cobalion. With 123 speed, it leaves only Weavile, Talonflame, and Tapu Koko that can reliably revenge kill it. Only Blissey, Chansey, Diancie, Regenerator Assault Best Jirachi, or Sylvalee Electric could reliably switch into Boom Burst. Even then, Noivern has a lot of options to take advantage of these walls like Super Fang, Switcheroo, and U-Turn. In short, Noivern puts too much pressure on team building and playing. Victini has access to V-Create, except now it can get boosted by Tinted Lens or Desolate Land. Poison Heal Pokemon like Zygarde and Swampert could answer the set, and even Flashfire Landorus T is used as a counter, but they get destroyed by Victini's other moveset, Sheer Force Life Orb. Sheer Force Life Orb can run Blue Flare to kill a physically defensive Pokemon, Bolt Strike to kill a bulky water, Glaciate to kill Garchomp and Landorus T, Energy Ball to snipe Swampert, and the list goes on and on. Sheer Force Life Orb perfectly complements the sheer power of the V Create movesets. Nothing can check Victini reliably, and even if you get the set right, like Flashfire Lando into Desolate Land, Victini can just U turn on you. Ultimately, Victini's two main moves that synergize well and can break through almost anything. Last but not the least is Weavile. Weavile uses a Sword Stance set with Magikarp and Life Orb, which is a direct upgrade from the OU standard playset with more power and an immunity to hazards. Without specific answers like Regenerator Feeny, Regenerator Cobalion, and Intimidate Corviknight, Weavile can easily sweep a team. But these answers can still be lured by other movesets. Poison Jab outdamages Regenerator and wins against Feeny in the long run. Low Kick one hit KOs Cobalion after a boost, and Weavile's other moveset, Choice Banded Technician, wins against Corviknight because Triple Axel now has 180 base power. Overall, Weavile was too fast and too strong and could break even its would be counters. Those are all the weird and unexpected bans of AAA. What list do you want to see in the future? Let me know down in the comments below.